uh, again, as the sign says, good morning. Um, so uh, for this one, I want you to work with the same project you were working with before, your first project. I don't know what you called it, but if you look in the file menu in After Effects and open Recent, also when you first launch it, a screen will pop up and show you all the last things you've done. Um, yeah, okay, so it, within a project, we can have multiple compositions. So over here in our little project panel, um, I think you have just two things, if you have the same thing as me. Um, let's go back to my timeline. Notice I'm in my render queue right now uh, because we rendered something previously. I'm gonna go back to my shape animation. This is this previous composition. This is the thing that's playing. Okay, um, that makes sense. So yeah, you should have something like this, right? We have three layers in a uh, timeline and two files in our project panel. Uh, I'm gonna make a another composition uh, the composition is these little are these little film strips here with these it looks like a tiny triangle and a square and a circle it's kind of cute um, let's make a new composition this time just by clicking on the little film strip here new composition uh, this one we're gonna call rotation and um, while we're here we might as well change the width and height a lot of you notice Photoshop could not handle the uh, the massive files that this creates. So when we make our GIFs, so we're gonna go to 800 by, oh, and I have this lock aspect ratio um, checked. I'm gonna uncheck this because you need to kind of force it to do a certain perspective, which is 800 by 600. Uh, keep the frame rate the same. And again, we're gonna do a three second animation. And background color is up to you. Uh, we could still use the same swatch if you want. Uh, I'm going to, so. If you are gonna use a new swatch, download a new one from Adobe Color. Uh, okay, so let's do a, uh, a purple background this time. Click okay. So now what we're gonna do is make a shape. Uh, let's make a star shape this time, because I think that will kind of show off the rotation better. Uh, so I clicked and held on the shape tool and I'm going to choose star tool. And what kind of, we have options here. Somewhere in here, there's like a thing for how many, well, let's, let's just drag it out. Uh, notice when I click and drag, it's using a previous fill and stroke, which is kind of cute. I'm going to hold down the shift key while I do this, and that will lock it down so that it's like a straight star. Let go of the mouse. Um, notice right away we've got that little anchor point problem. So, I don't know, Adobe, there's probably some good reason why it does it like this. I don't really get the logic of it. Um, and I hope that you don't either. Okay, so let's command, double click on this tool here, the pan behind tool. So command, that's right next to the space bar, command, and then double click. And that centers my anchor point. Just get that over with. Okay, now I'm gonna center this guy and um, I know some of you are like really crazy like me um, and you want this dead center. You could look under the align window and kind of figure out how to center it. Um, but I'm just gonna eyeball it like so. Um, and I'm gonna rename my shape layer star. And so what's kind of terrible about I'll have to fix it later. What I don't like about After Effects is these crazy menus. Like when you open up a layer, you have all these like options. Um, but it's also kind of cool. It's confusing, but it's cool because this is where you would tell it like how many points you want the star to be. So essentially in this layers panel, um, it's telling us like, okay, within the star layer, we have contents um, and we have one poly star. So I'm gonna open up that. And um, let's see, where do I get the amount of things here? Looking for anchor point skew. Hi, Nick, I'm recording, just so you know. Um, anyways, I don't know, I can't find it. It's in here somewhere. Um, you do have control over this at some point. 
Um, but that's why you have all these options here. Um, individual things can be animated, and I mean, you can change, animate the color of things anytime you see a stopwatch, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's just start rotating this thing. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to reset my anchor point because I don't know what happened there. Command, double click on the tool, pan behind tool, and just like before, we're going to add four keyframes throughout the timeline. Um, and as you can guess, if we're going to rotate, we are going to use the uh, option R, keyboard shortcut. Option R, at zero. Option R, at one. So these are creating keyframes, markers in time. We haven't done anything yet. Um, we haven't animated anything yet, but these are when things are going to animate. Um, so from here, I'd also like to add some text. So I'm going to go into my text layer and click in here. Star teacher. Why not, right? I could toot my own horn here. Um, I have the caps lock key on, so that's why you get this little thing. Caps locks. I'm gonna undo that. Um, I'm gonna turn down the size of the text, so that's over here in the character panel. I click and drag on that blue number here. That's the size of the type. Notice I'm getting like the spacing problem. So that is this thing here, the letting. We're gonna click and drag this number to the left. I'll shrink that down. Um, I have a paragraph panel here where I can center the text, so it's like, you know, centered how it's supposed to be. And I'll just shrink this down. You can see how it kind of stretches out if you grab the corners. Um, so you have different options. Like in the character panel, you can change font size. You can transform it here. Um, and it's a little awkward, the kind of the size of everything, I will admit, but I'm winging it here. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so we just have two layers. Um, first thing we want to do is animate the rotation. So let's look inside my star layer. And if you click on star, just hit the U key on the keyboard because we already made those keyframes. The U key is the Uber key. It will show you all that you have animated, uh, rather than showing you like everything in here, contents and all that stuff. So it's a quick way to kind of just show you the important stuff is the U key when you're in the layer. Okie doke. Um, the way rotation works is you have two numbers, an X number and a degree number. These X represents full rotations. This represents degrees. So what we're gonna do is kind of like rotate once, have it stop, for a second, and then rotate again. And we're also gonna ch animate the opacity as well, but for now, let's just do the rotation. Um, so basically, at this starting point, from this point to this point, we want it to rotate once. So all I'm gonna do is, rather than change the first keyframe, we're gonna change the second keyframe, and I'm gonna type in one X here. Hi. So now if we check my animation, you see the star rotating once. Kind of cool. And then it stops. Oh, it does go backwards. Interesting. I want you to delete your third, fourth keyframe. So we have it beginning at one rotation, and then it stops. Now we're going to add a keyframe. Um, so it's a little different strategy, uh, but you see that's how you get it to stop. Basically, it goes from 0x to 1x, and then it just kind of stays there at 1x at this position. So, you know, once rotated. Um, you could have typed negative 1, and it would have rotated the other direction, just so you know. Okay, so now we need to create an animation from the 2-second marker to the 3-second marker. So to do that, you're going to create a new keyframe. So let's do option R. And this time we're going to have it rotate three times. 
three times? Do I want to do that? Let's just do two times so we see the difference between one and two. Um, the, the biggest temptation for people is like they want to rotate a hundred times. And the effect that that will have is it will basically not rotate because you don't even have a hundred frames here. So how is it going to rotate a hundred times? Um, that's kind of the logic of it. So there we go. I'm going to play this, see how it looks. Rotates once, rotates twice. Notice there's no pause, it just kind of like keeps playing. So I'm going to change the position of the keyframes here. So it stops and starts. OK. And then again, I want to use this parenting option. And to parent the star, the text to my star, uh, I'm going to take my timeline, my little uh, guitar pick here, the playhead, to where everything lines up. So in this case, it's kind of in the middle of our animation. And then under the parent menu, choose star. And now everything will rotate together. Awesome. OK, lastly, we're going to add opacity to this. So really quickly, let's go to my star layer, the very beginning. And this time, I'm going to do option T, opacity. That creates a opacity keyframe. So between 0 and 10, I want you to create two opacity keyframes. And we're going to go from 100% to 0, per, or I'm sorry, from 0% to 100%. So on the beginning here, under opacity, I'll choose 0 and hit enter. Kind of cool. So now it kind of has the effect of fading in. And then we're going to fade out. In the last 10 frames. So we'll do two keyframes, option T, option T. And then we want our animation here to go from 100 to 0. So hopefully this video kind of gives you some practice with these keyframe things, kind of weird. Mr. Zbarth, why isn't the parent thing working? I'll tell you why. For some reason, opacity does not work with parenting. So to actually get this to loop, and so that you don't have this kind of floating uh, text, because I want it to start with nothing and end with nothing. I'm going to manually, on our text layer, option T. So we're just kind of following along with the same keyframes we use for star. Option T, option T. And again, I'm just going to match up uh, the Numbers here. So the very first keyframe, we're going to type in 0. So it's going to go from 0 to 100. And then from the 20th, uh, from 220 to 3 minutes, we'll go from 100 to 0. And that's it. Rotating and fading in and fading out in After Effects. To render this, first save the project. Um, and again, I could go back to my shape animation here. We saved both of those animations in one project. That's kind of cool. File, export, add to render queue. Um, when you render something, you have to, oh, now that we've kind of like saved this project, it has a place to save it. So it will likely already, we won't have to specify where it goes. Um, and I probably didn't ever render this. So I'm going to delete this. Yours will likely look like this for rotation. Remember to click the render button. And you'll hear the little beep, and um, that's it. Your test is, can you make a GIF out of that? So we were open Photoshop first, and um, there's something in the file menu that you need to find to make the GIF. So hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.